Hi, today we're going to be talking about LP tank removal and installation. And it's very important to understand how to do this properly because there are risks and hazards uh, to handle this fuel. So you notice that I'm wearing my personal protective equipment, some good thick rubber gloves, and a proper wrap around eye protection. Uh, LP fuel, if it leaks out of a hose or a fitting, it's coming out at 40, 40 degrees below zero. So I want to protect my eyes and my hands from that risk. Uh, when we start to disconnect an LP tank from a lift truck, the most important thing to remember is the line and the coupler is it empty. We can achieve that two different ways. One, by just running the whole truck until it dies, so we know that the line and coupler in the tank is empty. Or secondly, we can actually close down the valve and then run the truck until the engine dies. Either way, we've ensured that the line and the coupler is empty, so when I go to grab that coupler, it's going to be empty of fuel. Okay? So I've already run this coupler out of fuel, so now I'm just going to disconnect the coupler here using my protective gloves and my wrapper and eye protection, and I can disconnect that line and coupler. And then I'm going to come around here, release the latch on the LP tank bracket, and then I can safely remove the tank. Now installation of a tank is very important as well. When we go to put the tank back on, we've got to make sure we position it properly. There is a locating pin right here on the lift truck, and it ensures that not only is the tank sitting down in the bracket properly, but it's rotated uh, to the point where it's sitting on this pin. This pin corresponds with the protective uh, locator here on the protective collar on the tank. So it's important when we put that tank back up in there, we put it on the, on the pin properly. And put my latch on. Now before we go to hook up the coupler, it's very important with the uh, new tank that we make sure this valve is off first. If the valve is on, we're going to have some problems when we go to hook up the coupler. You hook up the coupler, you'll upset a check valve, and raw fuel can spray out. So we always make sure that valve is off first. Then we can go ahead and hook up the line and the coupler. And we want to make sure that we crank that down tight, make sure there's no leaks. And then we can slowly open the valve fully. By slowly opening the valve, we're going to ensure that, number one, if there are any leaks, we'll be able to uh, turn the valve off quickly. But also, there's a surge valve built inside the tank. If it sees a high surge of fuel, when I open this valve up, I open it quickly, I can actually upset the surge valve in the tank, shut the fuel off inside the tank. The truck then won't run properly. So we want to make sure that we crack the valve slowly and then open the valve fully. By opening the valve fully, we're going to ensure that the truck will get all the fuel that it needs. We're also going to ensure that in the case of a hose rupture or a fitting uh, damage, that uh, the surge valve inside the tank can actually shut off. If you only leave the valve a quarter of a turn, in case of a hose rupture, that can create enough restriction that the surge valve doesn't come into play. And then we could leak a whole tank of raw LP fuel down on the floor. We've got a large explosion possibility. So you always want to make sure we open that valve fully. And when we open the valve fully, we're ensuring a second thing. Many of these valves have back seats on the stems. So by opening it fully, we're ensuring that uh, we won't have any small leaks on the stem of the valve. But when we open that valve fully, it's important to make sure we don't jam it back tight, but we just snug it back. Because in case of an emergency, we want to be able to turn that off quickly. So very important. And then once we get it all hooked up, we look, listen, and smell. We look for any frost, because the temperature of the fuel is at 44 degrees below zero. So it will create a white frost around any fittings or hoses that are leaking or valves. We listen, because of the tank pressure will create a rushing noise. So you want to listen to it. And then we'll smell. That's actually an odorant that they put in LP fuel. So in case you smell that, it's telling you that you've got a leak. You want to make sure you shut down the tank and open up any doors and windows in that area and ventilate that area. Thanks for watching.